Lindmar's catalyst is useful to get a cis alkene, but what if we want a trans alkene? For that, we can use what's known as a dissolving metal reduction. And what this does is it allows for the reduction of alkynes to trans alkenes. We're using different reagents, and that will result in a different mechanism and therefore a different product. This reaction uses sodium metal, liquid ammonia, and a low temperature of minus 78 degrees Celsius. The reason we use this low temperature is it's really easy to achieve in the lab by mixing dry ice and acetone. That's the low temperature that that solution results in. And at that low temperature, ammonia is in the liquid form. So what this will do is reduce this alkyne to an alkene, but in this case, the trans alkene. So we have five carbons. Since it's trans, you can just draw a regular zigzag structure with five carbons. The double bond ends up between two and three. And your hydrogens that are added are trans. Or you can think of the carbon groups are trans. The mechanism for this reaction is vastly different than anything that we've seen before. Uh, this isn't a mechanism you need to know because you know it's kind of an outlier in our typical mechanisms, but I do want to show you what's happening here and then I think it'll make even more sense in the next chapter when we talk about radical reactions. So what happens in this solution is we have solid sodium metal and sodium would rather be the sodium cation that has a noble gas configuration. So what it does is it spits out an electron to give sodium plus and the single electron. Well, this electron then adds to the triple bond. So the way to think about this, think of a single electron. And with electrons, we use single-headed arrows because when we use a double-headed arrow, that signifies two electron movement. A single-headed arrow, like this, specifies one electron movement. So since we're dealing with just one electron, this electron will come and we have two electrons in the pi bond. That will pair up with one of the electrons in the pi bond. The other electron in the pi bond will just go on to its carbon atom. So if we draw what we get from this, we end up with the ethyl group. I'm just going to abbreviate that as ET. We've gotten rid of one of the pi bonds and we now have those electrons paired. So a lone pair is going to have a negative charge. That lone pair is this electron combined with this electron on that carbon. The other electron goes on the other carbon, so it'll be right here. So now we have kind of this unusual intermediate with a single electron and a lone pair. A single electron is something we're going to talk about quite a bit in the next chapter, but that is called a radical. It's an unpaired electron. Now we have NH3 present. That can act as an acid and this negative charge on the carbon as a base. So now in the presence of NH3, and I'm going to draw it in blue just to show that it's our source of hydrogens. This is just a proton transfer. And we're back to two electrons here, so I'm using full arrows. So 
So now we've added a hydrogen here, but we still have an unpaired electron here. Well, we still have sodium around, which can give us another electron. And that will pair up with the single electron on the alkene. When we do that, we get another lone pair. And a negative charge. And then we get to the product just by reacting with another molecule of ammonia, which provides a proton. So it's a very different mechanism than what we saw um, in the rest of this chapter, but that's because we're dealing with unpaired electrons. So again, you don't have to know this mechanism.